Live from Utah's news leader, Fox 13's Quick Cast starts right now. Hello once again, everyone. I'm Kelly Chapman. Governor Spencer Cox delivered his very first State of the State address tonight. Now, that address was only 17 minutes long to avoid turning the legislature into a super spreader for COVID-19. Cox praised Utah's efforts during the pandemic. Our healthcare professionals, public health servants, first responders, businesses, workers, seniors, and children, truly every single <clears throat> citizen of this state has made enormous sacrifices to save lives and keep our economy open. The governor also called for improvements for education and rural infrastructure. You can watch the governor's full speech on our website, fox13now.com. President Joe Biden is extending the executive order to postpone student loan payments. Talon Larson is a financial counselor for the AAA Fair Credit Foundation. He hopes people will use this as a time to make a game plan. Just helping encourage people to, to save more rather than um, use the extra money that comes from stimulus checks or whatever it may be to go get something nice and new. The student loan payment deferral extension is set to expire at the end of September. Intermountain Healthcare is expanding an innovative treatment for COVID-19 with something called monoclonal antibodies. Those are antibodies that stick to the active protein within COVID-19. Intermountain Healthcare hopes to give these to high-risk patients and potentially prevent the virus from sending someone to the hospital. So these are drugs that are intended to help reduce our hospital volumes and help people recover more quickly. Over the last month, the state expanded the use of monoclonal antibody therapy to 600 people. The Utah National Guard is also helping administer this treatment to patients living in long-term care facilities throughout the state. Well, this weekend, the Utah Pride Center is hosting the Pride Not Prejudice Conference for educators as well as students and parents on how to make the classroom and school setting more inclusive for LGBTQ youth. The conference organizers say the work done this weekend could potentially save lives. Everyone come together and let's lift our community up and let our students reach their full potential. This is going to be a virtual conference. It kicks off tomorrow evening and runs all day Saturday with dozens of workshops and two keynote speakers. We do have more information on our website. Again, it's fox13now.com. Mostly cloudy sky here across northern Utah tonight. Chances for light snow near the Idaho border, but things will get going tomorrow afternoon. Overnight temperatures waking up. It'll be about 25 to 35 degrees. That's why the storms that, that is moving through tomorrow will start as valley rain and eventually become even valley snowfall, but the mountains potentially some significant accumulations this upcoming weekend. More than a foot of snow possible for the highest peaks of Utah. For St. George, mid 50s for Friday, upper 40s for Saturday. Saturday. Next week, you're much colder, 30s for a high on Tuesday, bringing you a chance for some snow with our next storm system that moves through, mostly impacting southern Utah. And for the Wasatch Front, temps this weekend in the 30s, keep it in the 30s through next week. Kelly? We'll be ready. All right, Allison, thanks a lot. The Utah Transit Authority says a billion dollar plan to install a tracks line between Point of the Mountain and Lehigh is now off the table. Instead, UTA is opting for a new bus line, and it could cost half the money. UTA also says, aside from the costs, getting a tracks train in this commuter area would have been tricky, especially once more people move to the area after the state prison in Draper is gone. Today, several Dixie State University leaders and two attorneys took part in a panel discussion about whether to take Dixie out of the university's name. It was just last month the school's board of trustees recommended the change after a study was conducted about the name Dixie and the impact it has on current students and alumni. Despite that, there's still a lot of pride in that controversial name. If you look at uh, strong support for the name versus uh, strong opposition for the name, it's 12 to 1 in this community. 12 to 1. That is stronger than it was in 2013. The Utah legislature is set to decide during the session whether to make the name change official. Finally, history was made in St. George today. For the first time in 159 years, a woman has been sworn in as mayor. City Councilwoman Michelle Randall has been appointed to replace former Mayor John Pike, who joined the governor's cabinet. She will serve until the next mayoral election, and that will be in November. Congratulations. That's it for the Fox 13 Quick Cast. The day's top stories in just five minutes. Don't go anywhere. Modern Family starts now.